I'm here to take a look at the ASRock Killer SLI AC X370 motherboard. Let's dive in and see what the most surprising thing is about this board. Get it? Surprising? Because it's a Ryzen motherboard? So this is an X370 chipset, which means that you can run SLI or Crossfire. Now this motherboard does not support three-way Crossfire because there's nowhere to put the third Crossfire graphics card. It has four by one slots. But let's start with a tour of the physical layout of the motherboard. At the top edge of the motherboard, we've really just got the eight pin CPU power and two four pin fan headers. So this is, you know, CPU fan, optional fan, so you can do push pull, or you could do a water pump configuration because this supports high current. If you're using one of the uh, tower coolers that comes in a push pull configuration, like the new, you know, Hyper 212 Max that comes with two fans, uh, you could totally do that and run both of the fans off the headers here. Then we've got our four DDR4 DIMM slots, our 24 pin ATX power, two front panel USB 3.0, that's USB 3.1 Gen 1, the protocol, uh, front panel connections. Then we've got a single port USB header and an RGB header. Now these are meant for the CPU cooler, like the AMD CPU cooler that has the built-in RGB capabilities, but also for some reason needs a USB header, um, but you could use that with a peripheral that's just a single row USB header, which is pretty rare. If you don't know what that is, you know, don't tempt fate and use it because if you plug things in backwards, it will end badly. The water pump header will output 1.5 amps. All the other fan headers are good for one amp. Then below that, you've got another four pin fan header and six SATA six ports. So you can use up to six SATA, um, six gigabit per second devices with this motherboard if you so choose. Then just below that, we can see the uh, M.2 that comes off of the PCH um, at the lower edge of the motherboard, which is really probably the best possible position that you could put your second M.2 uh, for adequate cooling and things like that, even if you're gonna run two graphics cards, although it is gonna be under the graphics card a little bit, it's at least at the far end of the graphics card, which is hopefully not as close to the you know heat production facilities. That said, if you're using a high performance SSD, um, it's gonna be bottlenecked at two gigabytes per second read and write through the PCH, so do keep that in mind. Then below that, we've got our front panel connections and two more RGB headers. So if you're creative, yeah, you can deal with three RGB zones, although I wouldn't run a long LED strip off of the one meant for the CPU because it's really just meant for whatever RGB is actually in the, uh, the CPU cooler itself. The two RGB headers support up to 12 volts, three amps, so that's a 36 watt LED strip. Then next to that, we've got our clear CMOS jumper, two more four pin fan headers, two USB 2.0 headers, another front panel header. This is for old school cases that have old school speaker connectors and old school power connectors. You probably don't need it. A TPM header, an RS-232 serial port header, and then we've got our front panel audio connector, which is of course on a separated part of the PCB for noise isolation. Jumping around to the back of the motherboard, we can see that we've got our Wi-Fi antennas for our two x two Intel wireless solution, separate PS2 mouse and keyboard ports. This is the first time that I've seen separate PS2 mouse and keyboard ports on a Ryzen motherboard. Then we've got HDMI out. Then we've got a bank of four USB 3.0, uh, that's USB 3.1 Gen 1, the protocol ports. Right next to that, we've got an As Media USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second with a reversible type C connection. Then we've got two more USB 3.0 Gen 1 ports just below our Intel Gigabit NIC. Then of course we've got our audio solution, which does include an optical SPDIF port. The audio implementation on this motherboard is the Realtek ALC 892, but it is using the Chicon fine grade audio capacitors. And it does support Blu-ray audio playback, of course, and the high definition front panel connector, but you know, it is based on the Realtek 892 codec, but it does have enough ports on the back for a full 7.1 out if you choose to use the, the sound card in a analog 7.1 out mode. In terms of board layout, it's pretty standard. There are actually three M.2 ports on this. One of the M.2 ports has the wireless adapter pre-installed in it, so you won't have to do anything there. The uh, antenna wires run to the back, so you don't have to do anything there either. In the box, it comes with two rubber duck antennas. I wish that the antenna solution was a little bit more robust, but hey, the, uh, the two by two antennas get the job done. It is an Intel Wi-Fi adapter, so it will work with Linux. Uh, no problems. It basically works out of the box with everything because it's an Intel wireless adapter. Then we've got, of course, our two armored reinforced PCI Express by 16 physical slots. This will be a by eight by eight configuration with the Ryzen CPU. If you're running an APU, it's gonna be by eight by zero. That other slot's gonna be disabled. And then we have four PCI Express by one slots, which are connected through the PCH. Our primary M.2 slot is just below the CPU, just above the graphics card, which is uh, ideal placement in terms of airflow. 
and uh, it does support up to 80 millimeter M.2s in both M.2 ports. Now, of course, the one on top is a PCI Express by four connection. Um, that is PCI Express 3.0, so that is good if you're gonna have a high performance M.2 that's gonna perform at more than two gigabytes per second read or write. Now, in terms of power delivery, this seems to be an eight plus four PWM implementation. Um, so it is a digital VRM solution. We ran our 1800X at 4.1 gigahertz with no problems. There was not a tremendous amount of heat production in the VRM SOC area, but of course our 1800X runs just fine at 1.41 volts at 4.1 across all cores. Um, I would recommend a large tower cooler if you're gonna do the overclocking that much. We tested it of course with the Thermaltake Contact Silent 12, uh, Noctua uh, D15 tower cooler, uh, HyperX memory from Kingston, uh, G-Skill Trident Z, both the RGB and the non-RGB variety. Um, we had mixed results hitting DDR4 3200. We were only able to get DDR4 3200 on our Samsung B-Die kit, despite all of our memory, except the ECC memory that's installed now, supporting DDR4 3200. 2933 was, of course, no problem. The error correcting memory that we have installed uh, does work. So if you boot to Linux and you want to verify that ECC is working correctly. This motherboard does support ECC memory um, when installed in pairs. So we were able to you know, boot to Linux and verify that that was functioning correctly. Now in terms of other Linux support, all the hardware works as advertised. The CPU ports, uh, the sound codec, uh, at least at the rear panel, uh, the Bluetooth controller and the wireless controller, the network is Intel uh, Gigabit NIC and I211AT. So all of that worked perfectly with Linux. The IOMMU situation is exactly the same as we've seen on every other Ryzen board to date. The IOMMU is not really usable for graphics pass through if you intend to do that without an ACS patch. However, that is being worked on. I'm hoping that that's a software fix rather than a hardware fix. So if you've, if you've got to get your Ryzen fix, you can dual boot for right now. That, that's cheaper anyway. It means you don't have to have two graphics cards. So you can do that if you're looking to get your, your fix on for that. Uh, the NVMe showed up in IOMMU Group 0, and of course both by 8 slots was in IOMMU Group 2. Here's the output of LSPCI in case you're interested and you want to take a look at the actual physical devices that are installed on this motherboard, just so you know. And we can wrap up the video with a full tour of the UEFI. Now of course the motherboard does support P-State overclocking and all of the, the features that we've come to know and love from the, uh, the, the ASRock family of motherboards. Uh, I didn't really see anything missing or, or broken or anything in the UEFI. Before I updated, the SRIOV option was not present in UEFI, but after the last update, I was able to enable SRIOV. If you're gonna be using virtual machines of any kind, even without hardware pass-through, you will have to enable SVM in the UEFI so that you can do uh, virtual machines. It's basically AMD's hardware virtualization, acceleration, just hardware virtualization support, really, is what you need in order to be able to do the virtualization properly. Um, so you'll want to enable that in UEFI. And of course, as soon as you get this board, I don't care how up-to-date it is, you want to go on the website and you want to download the latest UEFI, I do want to install that on your board immediately. You, uh, you know, don't play Russian roulette. It's like, oh, it works, I installed the CPU, it booted fine, I didn't have to update my UEFI. No, that is wrong, think, do not do that. Update your UEFI, because you never know what's broken lurking under the hood. So what will you find in the box? Well, in the box, first up, you get a high-speed SLI bridge. That's nice. If you were buying the motherboard with SLI in the name, maybe you intend to run two graphics cards. Um, some motherboards have not been coming with the, the dual you know, SLI high-speed bridge. That's okay. If you're building a custom system, you know, a lot of people are going to buy a custom high-speed bridge anyway that's you know, RGB or got bling on it or whatever. But there's a basic high-speed bridge that'll get the job done in the box with the killer SLI AC. So that's nice. There's also two rubber duck antennas. These are just simple antennas that screw in the back of the motherboard. I would much rather have a wired antenna that you could stick on the case somewhere or something like that. That said, these two antennas get the job done. It is just a two by two wireless AC solution that has Bluetooth but you know it works and the range is pretty decent. Of course you have the driver CD, the installation manual, a note about the RGB software, a note about the installation order of your DIMMs. You've got four SATA 6 cables, your rear I.O. cover, an extra M.2 screw so when you're mounting an M.2 you know you've got the screw there and that's pretty much it for the contents of the box. Oh you get an ASRock postcard. There's a postcard in the box as well. So all in all in terms of our testing it held up. The board really didn't do anything weird and it was sort of what I've come to expect from ASRock this generation with the uh, Ryzen motherboards. 
there's really not anything super unusual to report about this motherboard. Of course, if you're gonna run a lot of PCI Express peripherals, especially populating the buy one slots, be sure to check out the manual so that you know, you know, depending on if you use the second M.2 and some other resources on the motherboard, which, you know, which slots end up being enabled and which slots end up being disabled. Uh, if you get an A-series APU, be sure that you look at and understand what PCI resources that provides and what connectivity you'll get depending on what your CPU is. But if you've got a Ryzen CPU, you're gonna get by 16, by zero, or by eight by eight in the main two PCI Express slots. Hopefully that's not news to you. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's pretty much it. If you picked up one of these motherboards and you have some experiences to report, good or bad or just anecdotal, please do share them on the Level 1 Text Forum so that we can build sort of a community knowledge of, hey, what's your, what was your experience with this motherboard? Was anything weird about the installation? And it's like, oh yeah, you know, I turned it on and it took a minute for it to come on the first time and then after that it was okay. Or, you know, whatever your experiences are, just to share with the community. I'm Wendell. I'm going to be hanging out on the Level 1 Text Forum and I'll see you there.